Sky Howdy, and welcome back to another episode of World Bigfoot Radio. And this time, we're not going to be so much talking about Bigfoot. We're going to talk about another cryptid, and surprisingly, in the Lone Star State. What's going on? Well, that's uh, disturbing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> what else? What else have you got to add to the whole horror fest that she was just laying down? Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't had any, any experiences as cool as cool as hers. Uh, I don't know if you can call them cool or not, but I mean, you know, <laughs> I guess whatever you want to define them as. Mine aren't as um, detailed or terrifying as hers. Sounds like they're just kind of out to get her, almost in particular. And if you're the boyfriend, then you're sort of probably in the way. Yeah, so maybe, the maybe they're out to get, get you too. <laughs> they're they're like, ah, damn it! Now she's got another one. Yeah, let's take him out too. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's probably the way they think, considering what the legends and folklore about him is like. Uh, pretty uh, foul tempered and hate humans, so not something you'd want to trust, actually. So other than your your one sighting where you got to have him in the headlights and look at his evil glaring little yellow eyes, uh, what else have you experienced? Uh, nothing as detailed as that. Um, mo mo most of my, you know, experiences with them is, you know, drop her off. She goes in the house. I sit there for a minute, you know, doing something with the radio, you know, calling, you know, dad, friend, whatever, you know. And then, you know, I'll be sitting there in the truck, it's running, I'm just kind of chilling, doing my thing. And you'll hear something run off in the woods, you know. And and the thing is, is um, if you know, you don't even really have to be like a big woodsman. If you know um, enough about animals, or let's just say you're walking your dog, you can tell the difference between something that's on two feet and something that's on four feet. You know, it, oh, it's yeah. a lot different. Yeah. Big difference in sound of something running between the yeah, and, and, and if for, for anyone that doesn't like, just take your dog out, go for a walk. You know, listen to your dog run, and then you run, and you can tell a huge difference. Yeah, for sure, it's obvious. So, are they noisy, or is it just like mm, sounds like a little kid running sort of thing? It's like a little toddler running. It's almost like the Chucky movies, you know, like when like he runs across the floor, you hear like a little like foot taps, it's yeah. exactly like that, but just on leaves. Oh, geez. That's creepy. So you know oh. these things are basically like sitting around there waiting for you to drop her off. Yeah, they're there. They, it's almost like they're almost like little stalkers. Yeah, well, no kidding. They are. Puck, puck rhymes with, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, notoriously ill-tempered little monsters. What did you find out from Robin when you talked to her? So when I talked to her, pretty much, I talk, you know, I told her what I saw. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, you got to fuck Wedgie. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she didn't have to think like two seconds. She's like, oh, no, fuck Wedgie. I'm like, that fast? She's like, oh, yeah, no, it's a fuck Wedgie. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well, how do you deal with puck Wedgies, Robin? Well, hand yeah. grenades and flamethrowers, uh, napalm yeah, yeah. strikes occasionally. Uh. <laughs> well, she did tell me, and I guess this is for, any, this is for anyone out there um, who's really going to have their own encounter or wants to go i guess look for one which i would highly advise against <laughs> yeah this is not one of those cryptids you go do a research trips looking for you're asking to die exactly a -A humans um really the only, like you don't shoot them don't kill them or anything because it's like any other little person it's then the rest of them will come after you yeah not only that it's basically it's almost like murder like but like on our level you know it's almost yeah. like you're murdering a midget and then they'll send the puck police to come and collect you up yeah i know next thing you know you're getting you know bombarded by like 10 or 15 of them at night no thanks yeah R really the only thing you can do um i mean if you have one or two of them you can probably run them off but I and mean, we, we have so many yeah there's probably 20 30 at least you know um, it's like a huge, it's like a huge tribe. It's almost like their own little like country in there. Like, geez. Well, they kind of have the same thing going on up here in this area too. It's in Narumbi where they're they're around. They seem to have like little underground cities and stuff, and they'll just be in like one little area, but there will be tons of them. 
So that's why it's like nobody messes around with them. Because yeah, yeah, okay, one one little human, two feet tall, you can drop kick them, and then his thirty friends start shooting you full of arrows. Not exactly. So really, uh, the only the only thing, um, yeah, pre- she told Robin told told us straight up. You know, there, there's not much you can do. There's there's too many of them. It's almost like you have like a termite infestation. You get rid of one part of the woods, you know, then they're in another part, and you get rid of that part, and then they're in the other part again. And you're just going to be going back and forth, and it's just not worth it. Um, and one thing is they hate sage. Sage, they, they hate they hate the smell. Um, they're, they're a lot smaller than us, but, um, but they have heightened senses almost, you know? Um, yeah. It's almost like they have like a bloodhound nose, you know? Like they smell everything. So to them, they hate the smell. It's 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 almost, you know, it's almost like pepper spray to them, almost in their own way. It's, it's you, you, light, you light a sage, they go, nah, we'll go, we'll go to your neighbor's house. Yeah, and this is well known for uh, smudging against evil spirits and you know, shamanistic ceremonies and stuff. That uh, sage is frequently employed to make, you know, bad spirits go away. And you know, it seems like the puckwudgies fall almost into a lot more into the category of the really downright diabolical and demonic little monster rather than just like a little person, like a gnome or something like that. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons, like we have a lot of people who are like, Oh no, they're demons. And, um, I think one of the parts is that is how, um, not only do they hate sage, but they hate salt. Um, and, uh, especially sea salt, sea salt. If you ever have an issue with puckwood, you sea salt all over the window, take care of them right away. Um, yeah, that's that's good to know. There's some useful information. But again, I refer back to the same thing. If they're having the same reaction to countermeasures commonly employed against malevolent spirits, why not? What's the reason to think they're not a malevolent spirit? Yeah, I mean, I mean just, you know, essentially they're some kind of little midget demons or something that have physical form. Yeah, I'm not honestly sure. I mean, um, I, I think they're a little both. If you had to ask me, it seems like they're kind of, you know, they're not completely spiritual they're not completely um physical but they seem more physical like um like if you do like percentage i guess like 65 percent physical 70 percent physical you know yeah well and that's sort of the same take that you get with a lot of the little people legends even you know different kinds of little people from all over the continent that essentially they're physical but they have like some sort of uh paranormal or magical what we do we would call like magical powers it goes beyond the physical embodiment, yeah, yeah. So they're not like intangible, like a ghost or something, and blinking in and out of existence. They're physically there, but they seem to have, you know, powers that we would consider to be magical at the same time. Now, the other thing I would recommend to people, and even Robin agreed with this too, is um, my girlfriend, they have a pit bull. It's a pretty big pit bull. Um, they tie it up in the backyard, and these things do not go near the backyard. They, they <laughs> yeah, they don't go near the backyard. <laughs> How do they react to uh, other uh, guard animals like, uh, you know, 100-pound Asian water monitors or Bengal tigers or... <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> thinking of potential upgrades here. Uh, moat full of gators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, <laughs> yeah. Some snipers on elephants, you know, anything, anything could hurt. Yeah. I would think moat full of gators would probably slow them down a lot. They might not oh, yeah. be on the anymore. <laughs> Until the gators see what they are, and they're like, now nah, we're good, man. You're on your own. <laughs> in the middle of the night, you hear that <clears throat> snap. What oh, happened? Shit. Oh, we got one less puck, would you? That's what happened. It's like a mouse trap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, well, it's nice to know there's some kind of countermeasure. So you can sage, you can smudge for them with sage, you can um, sea salt around perimeters. And this is like, uh, th- this goes back in high magic rituals and stuff like that for centuries and centuries and centuries. You know, you make a protective circle to keep the evil spirits out and stuff. You're using sea salt, and that's usually, you know, one of the things that gets talked about a lot. So, again, this totally complies with the the usual uh, dogma of dealing with evil spirits um, rather than the physical critter. Yeah, no, the uh, um, sage, salt, and honestly, I think the best thing to keep them away permanently so that you're not, um, so that you're not continuously, you know, lighting sages and stuff. Like if you're if you're not with the sage and the salt, then the next best thing I, I can recommend is getting a, a good sized guard dog. 
because uh, they they do not go near that pit bull. It's like a mutual <laughs> respect. It's, <laughs> it's like we could take this pit bull on and we could kill it, but it's gonna take about seven or eight of us with it. So let's do, let's call, let's call a truce here. All right. <laughs> Well, the other thing you got to worry about with those guys is they're sneaky and devious. And, you know, like in the legend with Moshops the Giant, they poisoned him. So they could sure try and do the same thing to one of your pets and poison them, too. Exactly. So, but I did I did just get her the German Shepherd. Uh, you already know this. I got her, my, my friend offered me a Shepherd. And I said, yeah, why not? And I gave it to her. And it's still just a puppy, but they seem to, they still seem to be kind of wary, even though it was just a couple months old. They still seem to kind of back off a little bit more as it's growing, you know. So I think as soon as it's full grown, they'll kind of, they can kind of stick the shepherd in the front yard, pit bull in the backyard, and they just gotta like worry about like the size of the house, you know. <laughs> and you get one dog for each side of the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a, get a dog for each side, and then it's like <laughs> almost like a perimeter. Yeah, they're all running guard duty in their own little paddocks that are keeping the pucks out. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I would think the bigger and more aggressive dogs would be uh, uh, enough to make them think twice about trying to sneak in there. Because, you know, you think about it, if you're their size, a really big dog like that is like the equivalent of a horse. So, you know, picture a horse that jaws in a bad attitude trying to chomp you. You probably really don't want to deal with that. Now, one story I, I, didn't, I didn't, I don't think I heard her talk about was um, her dad's remodeling their kitchen, right? So there's all kinds of holes in the floorboards and stuff. So one night, I drop her off, and I'm like, what's that hole in the floor right there? It's a big hole. It's where, like, a 2 by 6 or a 2 by 8 should be. She's like, my dad's remodeling. It'll be all right. Uh, I'm like, all right, you know, eat my house. I'm going to go home and take a nap. So I drive home. Very next morning, she calls me. Hey, they got in the house. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, one of the things crawled up through the floorboard, figured out there was a big hole where a 2 by 6 should be, and was walking down the hallway. Oh, God. But one of the dogs barked and scared it off. So that's when, that's actually just a couple weeks before I got the shepherd. I was like, because they don't let the pit bull in the house. Don't ask me why. <laughs> ain't my cup of tea. Ain't my house. You know, it stays in the backyard. Um, so that's why I got the shepherd. And I told her the shepherd stays in the house. You're not throwing this outside because if one of those things gets in the house, the only dog they let inside is like a little Yorkie. I'm like, what is a Yorkie going to do to this thing that's three foot tall and kills deer for a living? You know, so I got her the shepherd. Yeah. I told her it stays in the house. That's your inside protection. The pit bull can stay outside. Yeah, the Yorkie would just end up being another meal for them. They wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't probably slow them down very much. Yeah, like a little toothpick. Yeah, not big enough. It's like he'd fight in a chihuahua dog, man. The only, thing, the only thing that went in that Yorkie's favor is I don't think the Yorkie even was being aggressive. I think the Yorkie was just scared to death. So, like, it barked. But... The di the thing wasn't quite to her room yet. From what from what my understanding is, is the dog barks, but these things don't know that it's a Yorkie. So the for all it knows, it's another pit bull. So it runs. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Is the Yorkie is just an inside dog, uh, inside the house dog. Yeah, they let it out sometimes, but mainly it's an inside dog. You know, they let it out during day, but at night it's an inside dog. You know, that's they they know better. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you think about it, if they're that, you know, they're that size and there's only one of them in the house by himself, even a little dog could slow him down enough where humans could catch him or something like that. So better to not take chances and just get the heck out of there. And again, we know that they're devious and sneaky. And so, yeah. They, they are. And, it, and it, it honestly scares me, like, how intelligent they are. And I'll tell people right now, just because... They're smaller, and they're not driving a brand-new Escalade and watching, you know, NFL on a 75-inch flat-screen TV. doesn't mean they aren't just as smart, if not smarter, than us. Well, we don't have eyewitnesses in their underground city, so we don't know if they've got miniature SUVs. And yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, that's true. For all I know, they're driving a little mini version of my truck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't know. I, I'm guessing they probably don't, but, you know. Let's not put it completely out of the realm. Yeah. Uh, but it's scary because if you're out in the woods and you hear a whistle, like you'll hear a whistle in our area and you look around, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere in the woods, you look around, I just heard a whistle. I'm, I'm alone. What, you know, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Bigfoot does that too. So there's another option. Well, and don't forget about all the different kinds of birds that whistle. And... 
and humans. Yeah, it, it's and you know, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm a little familiar with the birds, not too familiar, but usually you can tell the difference here because our birds are kind of limited. It's like um, <laughs> they're kind of li- we we have very limited wildlife. Not a lot of things can handle the heat. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, and you don't usually get like whistles out of armadillos and stuff like that. So yeah, no, let's just no, count that as being an option. So you, one thing you didn't mention is that you figured out pretty much what area these little guys are living in. So the thing I've kind of noticed is, um, like like we said, we live in the country. It's nowhere. I live twenty twenty five minutes, maybe thirty if you go the speed limit. All right, you know, I'll admit it. I go a couple miles over. Sue me. All right, <laughs> I got places to be. <laughs> but um, but I don't get. I didn't even know these things existed. So I, I I've lived here for four or five years. I met her ten months ago. I didn't know these things existed until I met her. And really, it's only about like a like. It's just in her area is all it is. And that's what confuses me is my my friend lives probably about a mile or two up the road. He I don't even think he has any issues up there. It, it's just his little area. So it's, it's like about like a square mile or two. And it's just that area. Just that. And if you go up the road a little bit to where my friend's house is, I don't think he's had any issues. Honestly, I'll, I'll ask him and I'll let you know. Um, and in my area... I don't have any issues. I know I'm a little farther, but it's not like they have to go through several highways, a freeway, and a busy neighborhood to get to my house if they wanted to. Right. It's like they've got this one little area that they're just kind of local to, and if you're too close to that, then you're going to get pastured, but otherwise, yeah, you're fine. And that's what I haven't figured out, and because I understand if, like, they had the area before, and, um, but you would think if people are kind of encroaching on their land, um, I, I would figure they would expand. I mean, you know, just to kind of get more area to themselves. Because there's no competition out here for them. I mean, they might have the occasional coyote pack. And, like, I mean, you know, you get the mountain lion report every 10, 15 years. That's it. Yeah, well, you know, according to legend and stuff, they're not, like, heavy-duty reproducers either. They may live, like, virtually forever. So there's no... Just because the population isn't expanding or anything doesn't really mean anything with those things. Again, they're at least partially supernatural. Who knows? what They could live hundreds of years. We don't know. In fact, evidence seems to point in that direction, that they probably live hundreds of years. So they don't need to breed very often, or maybe they just don't even breed. They might be created beings that are left over for who knows how long. Um, so don't know what don't know what to make of that whole thing. But uh, it seems like some of the little people actually do reproduce because you find reports of, you know, different size ones, different size tracks and stuff that would seem to indicate there's younger ones that are, you know, not full size yet and then getting gradually bigger. But uh, it doesn't seem like you ever hear anything about that sort of thing with the pucks. I don't know. Could be wrong. Maybe somebody else knows something about that. Put it in the comments. But uh, I haven't heard anything about that at all. And I almost sounded like... Um, there's just a supernatural element to them, so. Yeah, no, for sure. I, um, I've, I've I've seen quite a few footprints, and I had I had quite a few pictures of of foot, foot, footprints, and then my phone broke, so I lost them, and I'm really mad about that still because I'm still I can't get them off the phone. The phone's garbage. I can't, and I've been looking for a while. I can't really find anything definitive, you know. Um, but one time he pulled up. She heard something, so I go, okay. I, I go, watch this. I turn off the lights. Um, this is before I got the 150. I, I, I drove a Ranger before the 150, so I'm in this little Ranger, and I go, okay, watch this. So I put it in reverse. It's a stick, you know, it's fun. <laughs> and I reverse. I turn off the lights. I go, all right, now watch this. I pull up a little bit so where she hear the noise, and I turn on the brights, and this thing freezes like – Oh, crap, they see me. And then it just leaps and jumps off into the woods. So the next morning, I come back. And I'm waiting for her. I think I was picking her up to bring her to the mall or something. Um, something. She had to go shopping or something. She needed a ride. I was bringing her. She's taking forever. I'm like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to go adventure. I go into the woods. And I go right to where she saw the thing. And I see a little footprint. And I'm like, okay. So I follow it. And there's a trail that went about. A hundred yards, and you could see the footprints. 
one, two, three, four, yada, 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 up until where it stood. And then you saw the two footprints where it leaped, and that was it. I lost it. Huh. Well, it's pretty cool that you found a whole trackway, though. I mean, you can conveniently pass it off as I was just seeing things, and it wasn't really there until you actually go and find the trackway. And then you're like, yeah, this, that was real. Yeah, I, I even followed it where I thought it would, you know, see a broken branch here and there, you know, nothing too definitive, but, you know, so where you can connect the dots, yeah, that's probably why that branch is broken, yeah, that's probably why, you know, this is knocked over, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, all I can say is, you know, you guys apparently have some idea on how to deal with these things and at least keep them at bay at this point and don't provoke them, you know, where that little area is, don't go there, stay away from it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, it's just I. I don't have that big of an issue because you know I live 20 minutes away. So my my biggest concern is for her. Yeah. You know, for sure, and her family too. Because I I don't I understand they know what they're dealing with and stuff. But at the same time, if these things wanted to, they could probably throw a rock bash in the window and jump in 30, 40 at a time. Yeah, but again, you know, when you start doing things like that, it has bad side effects, and that would... <laughs> yeah, I think... They're, they're probably thinking if they did something like that, that all the local humans might just finally decide that was the last straw. Yeah, that's it, you know, grab our shotguns, let's go talk about yeah. um, Let's go get the napalm, I know where their tunnels are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pour it in, light it up, rawhide. <clears throat> Fortunately, I have not found any tunnels yet. The best thing I, I could find that's even a possibility is I found a, a big, um, could probably easy fit at least a fox or a bobcat. I, mean, I, I, I grabbed a flashlight, showed it down. The thing went, I don't know how, it, it went pretty deep. I don't know if it's big, big enough, but that's the only thing I'm able to find where I'm like, yeah, a small one could probably fit in there. If a, if a 30 pound bobcat can fit in there, I bet you one of these things can fit in there. Yep, and you know, and the other thing is they probably got hit, they're smart. They probably got hidden entrances. They got yeah, things that are I disguised think. as a chunk of ground. They could just move it out of the way. There's a door. Yeah, the other thing um, they found was um, the other night. This is another thing, you know, cat killed whatever, and they found the body like the next morning or two, and then the day after that, the body was gone. And there was like a little wood air thing where the body and just like a little statue, and it was made out of the stuff you made uh, call it polymaster or whatever it's called. And it's just a little hollow bear, a little wooden bear. And they left it where the cat thing was. So um, her brother picked it up and kept it. I told I told him, you know, I don't know if you want to do that. Yeah, it could be a cursed item. I wouldn't touch anything they leave. All right. I'm not you, but he kept it. I took a couple pictures of it. You know, I still have it on my phone. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Well, make sure you send pictures so we can take a look at it. Yeah, no, I'll definitely. I, I took a one from every angle. I got the front, the back. I turned it upside down so you could see it's hollow. I right. even tapped it. I, I got I got it out. And I was like, I was like, is this wood? Because it didn't look like wood. So I tapped it. And then I got a piece of wood and I tapped it. I tapped the wood. I was like, yeah, no, this isn't wood. This is that thing you make garden domes out of. Huh. Interesting. I wonder where they got it from. They swiped it from somebody else. Yeah, I, I, asked, I asked Robin. She was like, eh, they might have stolen it. I don't think they made it, but they probably stole it. Yeah. Stole it, cursed it, left it for somebody to find. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that uh, concludes this part of the interview. Thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing it with us. And extra special thanks to Becky for being here and for your, for your um, intervention and talking her into actually being on the show. Yeah, it took a while. It took a while. Well, it's totally understandable. You know, <laughs> I, I had another guest on that was talking about the little people up in Wyoming, and, and she's seen them, and her great uncle was interacting with them and stuff, and that's just like taboo. The tribe does not talk about that sort of thing. Um, so I, it's totally understandable. Um, you know, don't want, don't want the bad guys fixating on you. So makes sense to me but again thanks for being on the show and and thanks again to becky for being on the show and with that we're going to go on to robin moonshadow and get her take on this whole situation
Okay, and for her take on this whole situation, we've got the uh, the knowledgeable one on this continent about the little people's situation, which would be Miss Robin Moonshadow. And uh, just thought we'd have you weigh in on the situation since, as, uh, as you know, I got contacted by Brett first and then um, had him uh, get a hold of you. We, we had to wait for you to get back to the field to, to, for him to be able to reach you and then uh, get some more specific details from you. So, um, what? first of all, welcome to the show. And secondly, what can you tell us about this? Thanks for having me back. Yeah, what we have here is an infestation of pug wedgies, and it's been going on in this one particular area for years and years and years. It's like the pug wedgies have claimed a, a specific spot right near the woodlands. And, and yeah, from what he's told me, <clears throat> These guys are a real menace, <laughs> and uh, when his his girlfriend was younger, they tried to abduct her, like coming in through the windows, and they do try to open the windows. They just haven't realized that they don't open from the outside; that they're locked on the inside. Uh -huh. So, what just to bring everybody up to speed that aren't already experts on this sort of thing? Can, what what could you tell somebody that doesn't really know much of what is a pukwudgie? Uh, a pukwudgie is two to three feet tall. They're gray or a light gray color, and their eyes are either black or yellow. They are dangerous. Uh, they have a pot belly. They'll wear a loincloth. Uh, now, these little guys were able to kill two giants within First Nations and Native American legend. So these guys are quite clever and you shouldn't underestimate them. They listen, they watch all your behavior, they will stalk you, and they do talk just like we talk. Um, I've gotten reports that uh, they'll call your name and if you go to see what's calling your name, you might not come back. There are some very old stories that allude to the fact that they might eat you, but of course, these aren't confirmed because, well, if you get eaten, you can't tell anybody. Yeah, your ghost might come back and tell somebody, but who's going to listen to your ghost? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so the other thing is that uh, you mentioned they killed two giants, and if I recall properly, that the, uh, the legend on at least one of the giants is basically they poisoned them. So they're notorious for using poison, too. They are. They will poison the tips of their arrows, and they will shoot you. So, do they have the same attributes as the uh, the Nurumbi, like the super strength and the super speed, too? They do. Uh, the Nurumbi are Native American little people. Yeah. Where a Pukwudgie, They're right around here and not friendly. <laughs> no, Nurumbi, I, I, I think the Nurumbi are just awesome little people. They're, they're very smart and they're tactful. And yeah. you don't mess with them. You have to absolutely give them the proper respect because they will throw things at you and they do use bow and arrows and they will shoot these little things at you. I mean, they're probably the size of a pencil, but th their aim is, is just incredible. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's the size of a pencil when the thing that's firing it has super strength. That's right. They are incredibly fast. They are incredibly strong. And again, with the Narambi, they do speak English as well as their native tongue. Yeah, we're going to be at a place where they are around here in a couple of weeks doing a live broadcast and expedition. And uh, yep, I've found tracks up there before too, little little toddler-sized tracks that were moccasin tracks. So Yeah, but probably about four inches long. Yeah, not even. They were actually, they were even littler than that. These were like toddler size, little, little. So you got, that was a female. Yeah. Males are typically four inches. Th uh, females are about three. And if you're lucky, you'll get a, a, a child, which I've got a two inch one, and I'm pretty sure that's a child because they are all moccasins. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, the, the fact is around here, they, uh, Obviously, they don't have as bad a reputation as the pucks do, but the, the, everybody's more made of the Narumbi than they are of ghosts or Bigfoot. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff that they did in the past, being allied with a crow and wiping out 239 Sioux warriors in one night, that one incident. 
um, sort of made, you know, most of the locals uh, pretty uh, kind of scared of them. It is, because numbers overwhelm. Yeah. And, well, and they had numbers, too. They had 250 warriors, and only 11 of them lived and got away. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because uh, the Narumbi would come down in the middle of the night while they were resting. Yeah. And uh, they would either injure you, kill you. I mean, they were taking out horses. Yeah, according to the legend, they killed all the horses first, so none of the Sioux could get away. Then That's they right. Because the they're right at that, the, they're right at that, the height where they would just reach up, and according to legend, they would rip the horse's heart out. Now it might sound cruel, but this is during wartime, and you do what it takes to survive during wartime. Yeah, and they were allies of the Crow, and the Sioux party in question had been raiding into Crow territory, and it just wiped out like a village a day before, and then they camped right next to where the Narumbi's underground city was, and <laughs> yes, that, that was location. A that was a mistake. <laughs> Big bad mistake, so yeah. Uh, so anyway, now the, the Pucks enjoy an even worse reputation. If anything, they're they're considered more supernatural and and a lot more evil. The Narumbi you could actually like um, trade with, or you know, make it some sort of accommodation with, or get along with. And no such thing that could be done with the Pukwudgies. They're completely intractable and hate humans. Yeah, Pukwudgies absolutely despise us. Now. Um, it wasn't always that way. Uh, the Pakwajis were once friends to the First Nations people, but they became so jealous of the giant uh, uh, Mashap that it, it drove them to start uh, acting up and creating havoc. And they started uh, kidnapping people and stealing people. And the people went to talk to uh, Squint, who was Moshop's wife, who was also a little person, but a Maymay Goeski. And uh, when she spoke to, to Moshop about it, he wasn't there. He was gone on a, on a trip. So her, and it was either two or three of her sons, went to take care of the Pakwaji. But the Pakwaji killed, in some legends it's all of the sons, in other legends it's two of the sons, and, of course, this made them upset, uh, Marshop and Squint. So they attacked the Pukwudgies, and Marshop being a giant, he just threw them all over. And this is how they come to be in, in um, places like the Great Lake regions and my area. And when they came back, they were worse than ever. So, again, Moshop goes to try to get rid of them. And... They trap him in the water and they shoot him with these poison arrows and it kills him. But that's not the last you hear of Squint though. Squint goes back to her people and we know this from another story that comes way years later where she was very sick and uh, her, her, one of her people or one of her clan goes to talk to a medicine woman to come and heal Squint. So they traveled to an underground city where these little people live and they are hairy little people and the only hairy little people that are not a menace are the main Mingueski, like Squint and Squint was very sick and it took a few days for this medicine woman to heal her and for doing so they, they gave her crystals and stones and semi-precious stones and medical herbs to say thank you and then again, we come back to the equivalent exchange that all the good little people seem to have. So when it, like when it comes to the Narumbi, um, well, for me, I get, I give the little people here granola bars. They love granola bars. I mean, they're sweets. They love sweets. They love shiny things. They like things that they can use. And they like like Red Mad tobacco and uh, Jack Link's beef jerky. <laughs> they do. And I, I've actually heard that they like toast and boiled eggs. A friend of mine who is a Native American, and he's a Cherokee, his mother took him one today to see one of the little people, and this is what she fed him, was toast and boiled eggs. He was between four and six years old, and he said that he would remember that for his entire life. Because every day his mother would go out and give this little person toast and boiled eggs. Huh. Was a Cherokee little person. He said, he said they look just like us. 
Well, apparently, at least one of the Narumbi really liked peaches because I had the person on my show that was talking about how I think it was her great uncle that was interacting with them, and he actually gave the one a can of. You just open the top of the can and gave him a whole can of peaches, and it's yes, like they love upended it. the can and gobbled it all down in seconds. Apparently, and they love sweet stuff. Well, they're so um, what we would say uh, hyperactive because they move so fast, like a hummingbird, that they would eat a lot of sweet stuff. So they're like kids on a sugar rush or something. Yes, but constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Way bad sugar rush. Little meth heads. So anyway, getting back to the pucks now, um, the pucks apparently then like after the giant chase, where they probably spread out all over the continent, so you could potentially find these little monsters anywhere. They Just, they hate humans. Is there any particular climates or terrains that they favor? Uh, well, you'll see that um, they will fight with other little people. Um, there was a story, and forgive me, I can't remember where I read it from, uh, but the, the local First Nations talk about how the two clans of little people would fight. One was good, one was bad, and it was the little native ones that won. Yay. It's the bad ones, yes, I, and I do believe that was uh, up in the Appalachians. Okay. Which makes sense. Uh, um, up along the uh, Appalachian Trail is where I heard the, the Cherokee little people talking. Just unfortunately, my GoPro didn't pick it up. So I've fixed that since then. I would expect that they'd be super loud anyway, so you better have some really good sound equipment to get that. Yeah, there was like three of them and they were chattering back and forth. And it is actually how you would expect them to sound. Very quick and me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> so, now getting specifically back to the situation with Brett down there and uh, with the Lone Star Pukwudgies, uh, <laughs> how often or have you ever even gotten any other Pukwudgie reports out of Texas before? No, I haven't. But I'm not surprised they are there. It is a warmer climate. Yeah, the, these these guys, uh, he contacted me uh, two days after we spoke and they left him. Uh, it was like a little bear carving. I don't know if it was wood or plastic or something, kind of like as a peace offering. And I'm like, oh, they know that we were talking and they're trying to make up to you. I said, don't believe their tricks because they will trick you. Yeah. Okay. There's, um, we were trying to find a way to appease them because they are little human beings. And of course you can't shoot a person. Uh, from what I know, they don't like the smell of sage. So you got to burn some sage around your house. It'll keep them away. Um, you could try to bribe them with food and treats, but that might make it worse. You might get well, more from it. Oh, Puckwoodies, as far as I, I knew, weren't really exactly like little human beings. They were like goblins. Goblins are different. Goblins are uh, long and lanky and actually look like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. They have a lot of those in Alaska. Well, I know there's more than one kind of goblinoid running around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Including, like, actually, you know, uh, some people lump the red red caps in as a type of goblin, too. Yeah, the red caps are a very nasty gnome, but some people refer to them as goblins as well. The red caps are like an anti-gnome. They look like gnomes, but they'll file their teeth down, and they delight in scaring us. The, well, these now, guys. How about the uh, place we're talking about, of course, is Texas, and near to that is Mexico, where you have the Duende, which are also oh, called. Yes. Yeah, the, the Duendes are also called red caps, yeah, because Duendes will throw broken glass at you. They'll throw rocks, they delight in terrifying you, and they will laugh and laugh and laugh when they do it. I mean, like, they are uh, the ultimate dangerous pranksters. So, now, uh, how are we sure that what they're dealing with are puckwoodies and not just duendes that snuck across the border? <laughs> uh, uh, duendes look like a gnome. No, uh, there are about two feet high. They, uh, they have dirty beards. Uh, and they still have the pointed cap. And it's usually red because, the, like I said, this is kind of like their symbol is the red cap. And it's usually the, where it's the cone. The cone is bent over. And they're dirty and raggedy, and um, 
with the pock whiteys pock whiteys are gray and they have pot bellies and uh they'll wear a loin cloth that's the only clothes that they wear and they go barefooted now i know it's duendes there are the reason that they and the red caps have the red caps is because they soak them in the blood of their victims that's what makes them yes red. Which That's means that right. Occasionally, they, they would have to get fresh blood and soak them again, or they just start turning kind of brown. Yes, according to legend, anybody who would stay in an old castle or in an abandoned buildings uh, would be killed during the night while you were sleeping by the red caps. So then they would then take their hats, and this is why their hats are red. They would soak it in the blood of their victims. So now, as far as the gray-skinned little uh, pot belly puckwidgies, they have uh, sort of a different-looking face, too. They don't look exactly like a human. They got a long nose, long chin. Do they have the goblin ears? Uh, no. Puckwidgies have ears like ours. And they don't always have a long chin or long nose. Sometimes their face is very flat, and they'll have a pug nose and a short chin. But they all have a wide mouth. Okay, now how about the uh, the tie-in with the porcupine thing? Oh, for, for the porcupine, Pukwudgies are the ultimate little sneakers. If they can fool you, they will. It depends on their mood. Uh, they will skin a porcupine, and then they'll wear it as camouflage. Well, that's sort of what I had heard, too, that they uh, there's two different schools of thought. There's the one school that some of the tribes think they can actually physically turn into a porcupine. And there's other ones that think they're doing, like, making a, the equivalent of a human having a buffalo fur robe or something, and they're just making it out of a porcupine. Yeah, uh, they'll do this it's with like wax. armor and insulation in that case, you know. Yeah, because you're not going to mess with a porcupine. Uh, and the, the thing about puck wedgies is they are never alone. They're like flies. There's always more than one. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean that there isn't any more than one there. What we see here is you'll see a lone one every once in a while, but they are a scout. I uh, like one story that, that came to me. She was, uh, they were coming back from their friend's house and uh, they got a flat tire and they got out to change the tire and she just happened to look up the road and saw a Pogwaji walking right down the middle of the road. Good luck. And he looked at her, she looked at him, and she said it just gave her the creeps. Uh, and you're not supposed to be there, so she told her husband you want to hurry up with that tire. And he looked around, he also saw the Pogwaji, and he really rushed the tire, and he didn't even bother putting uh, the... Uh, Oh, the thing that puts the car up, the, the tire yeah. iron, or any of the, the jack, he didn't bother putting the jack back in the in the trunk or the back seat, he just kicked it in the ditch and they left. <laughs> yeah. And when they got back, she looked up to see what they saw and it, everything she saw fit the description of a puck wedgie. So now I know Brent, when he called me initially, said what he, he got a glimpse of down there had a nice long nose on it. Which is why I was wondering if it was a puckwidge even at all to start with, because I figured it might have been a goblin. Yeah, as, as he explained it to me, yeah, they are pucks. Because like I said, they, they'll, they'll, some of them will have a long nose, and some of them will have a short nose. Okay. But uh, as I've been reading recently and going through some other legendary news, it's not uncommon for some of these little people to interbreed with us. You. Well, I was kind of shocked. But I'm like, one, well, one wonders how the mechanics of that might actually be accomplished. Well, yeah, I was thinking, uh, okay, I'll move on past that. <laughs> but, uh, and it's different little people. I mean, it's not just uh, this kind or that kind that would interbreed with us. It's, I've heard stories like this half a dozen times. And that's where uh, midgets come from. Uh, no, probably not. But hobbits. That's why we get hobbits. Hobbits. That's where hobbits came from. Hobbits, yeah. Very little hobbits. Yeah, and, and Brett's area, they've just taken over this, uh, uh just, uh, as he explained it to me, it's just a couple of blocks. Maybe a bit more. 
because he said his friend lives, you know, just like one street over, and they don't have any problems. So they just got um, this. That's what it sounded like to me too. They've just got this one little area that they've sort of taken over. And do we have any idea how long they've been there? Because it sounds like they've been there a while. It does. Um, he says that uh, they tried to abduct his girlfriend when she was very little. I, I don't know the ages, um, but the uh, his uh, girlfriend's mother seems to be very aware of them. And she's lived there for a very long time. So we could be going back, you know, 50, 60, even 100 years because yeah. we don't know how long these little people live. Right, or like, even longer. They could have, like, been there before the humans showed up and settled in the area for all we know. Exactly, uh, because uh, from what we know, giants and little people were here uh, when we got here. Yeah. Because, you know, we've always been told Canada, America, is bare. The only thing that was here was animals. Yeah. And uh, we First Nations are always saying, no, giants were here. No, little people were here. Yeah. Uh, Bigfoot was here. Yeah. Actually, I had uh, members of more than one tribe now tell me to be precise that Bigfoot was here first, then the giants and little people showed up, then the humans showed up. Well, it depends. It depends. Uh, there are different tribes have different belief systems. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's plenty yeah. of tribes, and they all have different opinions on it. I just think it's yeah. hilarious that there are several that seem to think that, no, Bigfoot was the one that was here first. He was here before yeah. anyone else got here. So, anyway. Well, as far as that goes, uh, what advice could you give to anyone who potentially might have one of these little porcupiney, puckwoody infestations anywhere near them? If you have these guys around you, what do you want to do and not do? First of all, make sure your doors and windows are always locked because they will get in. If there's a way to get in, they'll get in. As Brett told me, uh, his father-in-law was fixing a piece in the floor one day and they didn't think anything about it. And one of them came up to the floorboards and they had to kick him out. These are They are very bold. Uh, the second thing is, is they don't like the smell of sage. So you could burn sage in your home or around the outside of your home. And the last thing that you could do is try to appease them with food and, and gifts. They like sweets and shiny things. But you'll be taking a chance you might make it worse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, where's the where's the line between, uh, hey, I don't want an uh, issue with you guys, and then them thinking, oh, we're getting appeasement. Give us more, human. Yeah, because remember they hate us, yeah. and they will they will kill us if they get a chance. Uh, from what I understand, uh, it hasn't gotten that far yet, but they have been taking house pets. Uh, they'll take cats and dogs. They even took a uh, uh, a larger dog, but they're afraid of the pit bull in the area. They haven't touched the pit bull yet. So basically, the best thing to do with puckwood is to wrap up that is just stay away from them. Don't interact with them. Don't, don't, and don't talk to them. Don't talk to them. They will trick you. They will pretend that they are nice. Let's be friends. It's a lie. And it will, and you might believe them until somebody disappears. Yeah, I heard from another source that if they kill you, they actually have claim to your soul, too. That, that could be. But then again, they are we don't. They're supernatural little monsters, and we don't know. All right, well, thanks for coming on the show and uh, helping us to sort out this whole Lone Star Puckwoody thing and uh, keep up the good work with doing all that documenting on the, uh, the little people. You know, as I get uh, it, encounters and reports sent to me, I forward them to you, so I'll keep doing that. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, you send me the best stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I'm not even researching little people, but it still keeps getting thrown at me all the time because they don't know what else to do with it. You know, you need to get to be bigger. You got to be more well known so they know you're there and they go directly to you. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep working on it. Yeah, well, we got a book coming soon. Okay, well, that sounds like good news, too. All right, dear. Well, thanks again for being on the show, and uh, let's get back to the rest of it at this point. Yeah, thanks for having me. We'll talk again soon. So make sure that you're kind to everyone. Uh, safety first, last, and always. Pay it forward. Don't be mean to people if you don't have to be. Uh, don't flip off the mountain giant. 
don't poke dog man with a stick don't punt the puck would you and for god's sake whatever you do do not hug the wookie